Hi guys, welcome back. Okay, uh, approximately four and a half years ago, I put new discs and new pads on the car, and approximately four and a half days ago, the warning light came on for the pads to be in low. So I guess it's time we put on new brakes. So let's get the intro out of the way, and then we'll get on with the job. believe that the car's done 50,000 miles uh, since I put the brakes on and we've traveled around together and videoed in so many places um, anyway before we start the job uh, a lot of you asked uh, can I show where we get the parts from and what I pay for them so we'll go through the parts and where they've come from eBay is one of my favourite sources for parts, so here are the screenshots showing the various parts and the listings and sellers and prices so that you can go and resource these parts. The brake discs came in at £83.94 including postage. The front pads were £18.63 with free postage and the rear pads came in at £16.50 also with free postage. Now that's a total cost of £119.07 altogether. Okay, so 50,000 miles, the new parts altogether were £120, so that works out at four miles per penny for the brakes. I think that's quite reasonable. Now, as you can see, I bought discs for the front as well. I don't know why, but the front discs uh, have worn quite badly. And normally I wouldn't expect to replace the discs, but um, in this case we're going to have to. So, first thing we're going to do is loosen off all the bits first before completely undoing them, because if you start undoing bits it can make it awkward to get the other parts undone. So, we've got two screws on the disc here which we get them undone now then this one's a little tight so what I'm going to do is favourite technique of mine which you've seen me do before we'll get a bit of WD-40 in there and then what we'll do is just work that work to WD-40 in and clean the threads out as you can see, that is now starting to loosen off. Again, don't force it too much, otherwise you're likely to bugger up the threads. And then you've got problems at the moment. Now, four bolts and I hope they'll be on the other two cameras now. You've got two large bolts here which use the torque drive set. So you need a large let's see what size that is. No, it's not marked on it. But it's the largest in my set of the torque drive bolts. These always make me a little nervous as they get very very tight these. Usually again you need to be very careful with these. So plenty of pressure and there we go. Is that one loose? And then again, base pressure and there's that one. Loose. So they're now loose, the two screws are loose. And then the next thing we're going to do to save us undoing the brake line. It's flexible here, so I'm going to undo 
this bracket on the back of here. Now that's a 10 mil socket. Under here for a moment to find it. Now, same thing again. Nice and steady pressure. And that's that one. Loose. Right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the pads. So that pin comes out of there. Put that somewhere safe so we don't lose it. Okay, so we just got to knock this pin through. Now this again can get a bit sticky. It is worth changing these from time to time. So it's a little bit of WD-40 and a little bit That's the pin out. That when you've got this spring clip that is entangled in your fingers. Okay, now you've got the sensors that come out. Out. And then, I know some people will disagree with doing this, but I'm changing the discs anyway. So, what I'm going to do is just use all. Oh. Come with me for one minute. push the pads back, keep an eye on this with a rag to make sure that it doesn't push the fluid back up and spill out all the inside here. So now I've got to bring these pads back. Okay, they're right the way back. Alright, that's your old pads out. And brake glue's all good. Excellent. Right, so now what we're going to do is remove that 10mm bolt completely up there. A little tight, so I'm just going to get a ratchet on that again. Obviously, if you're just changing your pads, then your job's basically done. Okay, so that's the that's the bolt that holds the flexi in place there. That allows you now to move that and the caliper around. I'm going to take the bottom bolt. Caliper. Well, now, no Porsche do recommend that you replace these, um, but I'm not going to. Right, now, before I take that one out, I'm going to take them screws out of the disc. There. Now this one that was being awkward. It's a little time consuming, but we'll try and just try and speed it up a little bit for you. Post-production. With a few tasty cuts. There we go. That's that one out. Okay. Oh, 
I'm just going to nip these, and then once I've nipped these, Oh. 
So, next, go through tight, that one tight, and then these screws. What I will do, once the pads are back in, you just get some up stand on the brakes, or I'll just check them screws, but again, they don't want to be over tight. Now, I would normally touch up any scratches on the caliper. There's a couple of small scratches on the caliper. But, I can't find my red paint. So, it'll have to be done another day. But it still looks really damn good. Right. New pads. Little helper. Okay, so here's our new pads. All nicely sealed up. Borg and Becker, good mate. It's a very good price. Got the metal thing on there to stop them from squeaking. And um, like the other one in, you don't need to keep the plastic on these. Just joking. <laughs> Okay, this side's a little tight, so what we're going to show you is the gold paper stack in here. There you go. Press that cylinder in back a little bit more. There we go. Right, that is it. This horrible rusty metal plastic metal spring loaded thing that needs to be in a paper thing. We've got a clip on it at the bottom there to hold your sensors. Uh, I think it's better to put the sensors in beforehand. Yeah, put the sensors in first. There's that one. There's that one. In there, and that goes in like so. Pick a little bit now. There we go. Going in there like so. And then your sensor cable. This all wants to paint the cup. Oops, underneath it. If these got particularly tight or particularly tight coming out, you can clean them up with a bit of wet and dry paper, then take the pin off of them, take the rust and that off of them. Remember your pinhole needs to face outwards so you can get your retainer pin back in. Yeah, 
So that's the front and rear side done. The driver's side obviously is exactly the same. And the rears are just pads, we're not changing the discs. So we'll get the wheel back on and then we'll start on the rear. So it was four days ago now that we did the brakes. The reason I've left it four days to film the last bit of the video was A, because uh, it took us six hours altogether to do the brakes. Bear in mind we were shooting video at the same time, so we probably could have done the brakes in around three hours. Um, so I was tired and uh, had other things to do as well. So we decided to leave it at that. The second reason is obviously it's given the brakes uh, four days to settle in. You, when you change brakes, you put new brakes in, you have to allow them to bed in and <coughs> that has now happened. Um, so they were a little bit vague for the first few days, but now they've settled in, they feel fine. Now uh, the question is probably going to ask is has it made any difference because the pads uh, and the front discs were really badly worn um, no the brakes were fine even though the discs were in quite a bad state and they're still just the same so it's not made any real difference to the braking capacity of the car or the way the brakes feel so obviously although the discs were badly worn they weren't adversely affecting the braking of the car in any way so that pretty much sums it up if you have any other questions please let me know in the comments below hope you find the video helpful hope you find it entertaining um, if you enjoyed it please click the like button and share it with your friends um, if you'd like to see more of my videos then click subscribe and click the notification icon so that you know when i bring out new videos um, I've changed the way I do the video slightly now rather than doing them at one at a time because I don't have the time so much I work quite a lot now lately um, I kind of film them in bits and pieces so I've got a, the bumper video I'm slowly collecting pieces because I'm doing a bumper a bit at a time and I'm slowly collecting bits for other videos so they will come along as I get them finished so um, thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.